Hello and welcome to English 911. My name is Skyla and I'm here to answer your questions. Okay, this last week I got so many questions, it was just lovely fun to read them all and to learn more about my own language actually because every time you ask me a question, I go and I read up and I say, oh that's how it works. Because until then, quite often I just, I know it's right because I feel it. So keep asking me, I'm learning so much, it's great fun. Okay, so our first question for today is from Dimitri. And Dimitri is having problems with phrasal verbs. He asks about doing someone in or doing someone out. What do these mean? So here we have do someone in or to do someone out. Well, you know what, Dimitri? These are very interesting words you've chosen. To do someone in actually means to kill somebody. In like a gang sort of way. Like if you watch the movie The Godfather, the papa or whatever his name is of the family, he will like, oh, I want you to go do him in. Right? So this, bad. <laughs> if you hear people saying, I need to do him in, run away fast, okay? To do someone out, this means that you have unfairly, um, what is the word I want? Unfairly or in an underhanded way made it so someone can't have something. For example, here's a little child and they ha want ice cream, but you sort of say, oh here, have some money. And then they go and they buy an ice cream and then you take it from them or something like this. Unfairly, you've done them out. You've done someone out. So to do someone in, run away fast. It means to kill someone. To do someone out, means to be unfair or an underhanded way to deprive someone of something, okay? So thank you for that asking that question, Dimitri, and I'm waiting to hear what else you'll have to ask us. Okay, for our next question today, we have from Victoria. Now Victoria is asking about comparatives and superlatives, which are always great fun, right? So a comparative, here we have like a making some, you're comparing two things, right? Here, let's go start with a one syllable word. Say, sad. Let's make that more like an A, sad. So, if there's me and there's Bob, and I'm crying and he's happy, obviously I am sadder, right? So we want to need to add ER, and when there's just one, one consonant, we need to add another consonant. And then when we have there's three of us. There's myself, and there's Bob, and there's Sally. And Sally is just crying, and there's just tears going everywhere, and there's literally a river of tears. We would say that Sally is the saddest. Okay? So this is for one-syllable words. We have sad. Now let's say we have happy. So we have a two-syllable word ending in Y. We need to take off that Y and add I, E, R, I-E-S-T, right? So we have happy, happier, and happiest, right? The happiest person here is me, <laughs> because I just know that I'm happier than everyone, but I know that you have a chance too. We'll have a happy contest. Okay, next we have words of three or more syllables. For example, interesting, okay? Let's have interesting. Well, let's clean off the board a little. Interesting. For these ones, you need to have use the most. For example, you know what? The most interesting book I read was this, right? Because you're comparing it between not just two books, you're comparing it about three or four or 500 books, saying the most interesting one. And then to have it, you have the least for the opposite. So here you have two or, or for three or four syllable words, you use most for meant the best, and then you have least for the worst, okay? And of course we have our idea of bad, worse, and the worst, and good, better, the best, right? So here's the thing, remember, when you have the ER, E and R, that you add to like the end, the normally, right? You add ER. This is between two people, right? You're comparing 
E and you're comparing R. You have two people saying like, oh, I'm better at this than they are. Or for example, this cake is tastier than that cake, okay? However, if you add the EST, meaning like the best ever, the best of the best, you are comparing three or more. So you have EST, three or more, okay? So remember that, ER is two. EST, three or more. So now onto our third question, and maybe the best of our questions. I don't know, but we'll have to see. Our question is from Bogdan. Okay, let's clean off this board a little bit. Bogdan is asking about blatant and fragrant. Flagrant, sorry about that. Fragrant is a smell. Flagrant and blatant. Now, I'm guessing these are some words you haven't actually, a lot of you haven't heard. So let's write them up very clearly. Blatant and flagrant. These are words I heard in school a lot. Not always at me, but this is where your teacher would say things like, how could you have such a blatant disregard for the rules or such a flagrant disregard for the rules? Basically, let's just define these words now so that you understand those sentences, okay? So to have blatant means literally noisy, okay? So literally this means noisy. However, there is the other idea, which is what the teachers were talking about, which means that you've done something so that everyone could see. It's just unobtrusively, you stood up in the middle of the classroom and just, I don't know, spat gum or something. Like something that you're not allowed to do, you were doing so that everyone could see you. Noisy, okay? Flagrant now means like openly scandalous or like notorious, famously bad, almost like this idea. So noisy is just sort of you did it so that everyone could see. It's not even always bad. Flagrant though is bad. So your teachers were probably right, at least mine were, you know, flagrant disregard for rules, blatant disregard for rules. How could you do it so noisily in front of everyone and like you just didn't care, right? So like scandalous, I cannot write, let's write it over here, scandalous, okay? So B for B, yeah, no, I don't know, like a note, you have blatant noisy music, just noise, and flagrant, shocking. Flagrant is shocking. Let's go with this, okay? So noisy and shocking. So I hopefully, I really hope that you never ever hear these words from an adult, from a superior telling you that you've been doing something blatant or flagrant. And I wish you the best. I wish that you never hear these words. I hope that your studying of English this next week goes wonderful. And if you need though, you can always write me for quest with questions. I promise I won't do you in. I won't even do you out. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye.